All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the June Trinex Social Office Hours. Um, we're gonna give everybody just another minute or two to start filtering in. Um, but then, you know, once we kind of see that number of people tapering off, we'll, we'll kick off. Reggie's gonna give us um, some really exciting product roadmap updates today. Um, and then I'm going to do kind of an intro to TikTok marketing, so both creating um, a TikTok account for your brand, um, but then also ads, um, if you would choose to use the TikTok ad platform as well. So we'll give everybody another minute and then we'll kick off with all that good stuff. I just wanna to say too, thanks everybody for sending in your questions. I noticed that last couple of days, we had a lot of questions come in. So just keep that in mind for like next month, if there's something that you just feel like you wish you could see on this call or something that you're interested in us discussing, send those in it'd be awesome for Anna and i to be able to uh, make sure that we incorporate that into next month's uh, call as well yeah absolutely so it looks like we um we have a pretty good number of people here so welcome everybody um i'll pass it off to Reggie, the Shadex Social Product Manager, um, to kick off with the product updates. Um, and then I'm Anna, I'm on the marketing team, so I'm going to take the marketing um, strategy side of things and go through some um, TikTok marketing tips. So Reggie, it's all you. All right, awesome. Let me switch over to my screen share. Let's see. Oh, might be the wrong screen, but let me try again. <laughs> let me know if you can see the uh, this slide there, Anna for the office yep. hours. All right, yep, awesome. Cool, thanks again, everybody. We're super excited. This week we have, or rather this month, we have a lot of exciting news on the product side. Um, you guys saw the email that went out a couple of days ago and we triggered it last week as well. But we're starting to talk a little bit more about TikTok. It's been coming up a lot in conversations. You guys have probably seen it all over the social media news world. And so we're excited to bring in some news around that, but also some other product features that we wanted to announce. Now, last month, if you guys were here, you remember us talking about the Android app. We've gotten a lot of requests uh, for updates. So when is that gonna be going live? So the good news is that it, the Android app is actually now live. You can go to the Google Play Store, go to, to look for Traject Social, and you'll now find that in the App Store. So if you're trying to schedule on a go, you wanna take a look at your content, for the week, or if you, even if you just need to upload some in, images when you're on the go to your project, you'll be able to do that through the Android app now going forward. So that's super exciting. We were getting a lot of users who joined our beta test. I think we ended up having something like 25 or 30 users uh, who tested it out for like about a month, month and a half for us, and that was super helpful. So if you guys are on the call too and you want to test out things before they're released, we'd love to, to hear from you. Feel free to email the support email it's social at bytraject.com. So we'll be able to add you to the list for the beta users. And anytime we have things coming up, like Canva, by the way, a uh, hint there, without, it's coming up very soon. We'll add you guys to a list of beta users so you can try the feature, give us your feedback, so we can kind of try to you know, do the best that we can to perfect the feature before it goes live. So that's the first product update I wanted to give you guys. The other one has to do with multi-image scheduling for Instagram. That's something that's come up a lot. I think it's been close to a year now where scheduling to Instagram has been a little complex when it comes to the, the mobile side, right? You, you can publish the video from your phone. We'll push it from our iOS app into the Instagram app, no problem. Same thing goes with the single image post. But there was an issue with multi-image posts. There has been, which is the Instagram, uh, kind of just the way the mobile app worked, it was very hard in the past to be able to push more than one image at a time to the app. So since then, we've been able to make some changes to how we communicate with Instagram's app through the mobile experience. And now going forward, you'll be able to use the Traject Social desktop app, you know, the web app to log in, schedule a post up to five images, once you push that to the, the Traject Social mobile app, you'll actually be able to push all of those images straight into the Instagram app. You won't have to worry about downloading things to your you know, camera roll or to your album and then have to go in there uh, and do it manually through the Instagram app. It will automatically open up this window that you can see here and you'll be able to tap the media that will automatically download to your phone. So this should be able to you know, allow you to get to that multi-image scheduling for Instagram a lot more quickly, more efficiently without having to 
take too many more steps there. I know that was something that was coming in as far as requests pretty frequently. So we're really excited to be able to launch this. This feature should be going live on Monday with uh, our iOS update that's coming out next Monday. And if you guys have questions on any of these, by the way, feel free to add those to the Q&A. We'll make sure to get to those at the end of the call today, uh, just in case there's Android questions or questions on this multi-image scheduling. And then the next update that I wanted to give you guys here was the content library. So this isn't so much as a product update, but more of a question that we were seeing come in pretty frequently. This question is probably asked a couple of different ways. Um, if you haven't used a content library yet, um, I can probably sum it up in a couple of different ways. One is probably, you know, if you have uh, a lot of locations uh, that you're managing and you're trying to push uh, a single piece of content to that, you know, all of those locations at the same time. The content library would be an awesome fit for that. It'll allow you to schedule posts across multiple brands, multiple projects at the same time. So that's one of the use cases that we hear about a lot. The other use case that's pretty popular is just approved, like brand approved content. Maybe you're a large organization and you wanna make sure that either all of your locations or your employees, they have a set of approved brand content, right? Whether that's the graphics, whether it's just the tone, um, and you want to be able to offer them a couple of templates. The content library will help you with that as well to be able to create a library of pre-approved you know, brand templates for them to use in their social posts. So if you're an account owner or if you're an admin of your account, you'll see the content library option right there under your uh, My Account dropdown. And that's going to take you to the screen that will allow you to create a new library category. So in this example here, like I said, brand approved content. That's just kind of what I'm going for. I'm going to select a couple of projects and I want to give them access to templates with graphics and text that are approved for the brand usage. And then, so I move on to the next step here. I'm just creating a quick template. I've got some text in here and then I've attached an image. Now I don't have to specify the project here anymore because I've already done that when I created that content library category. So when I jump into this category, I can create a template as you can see there behind this this screen on the back and that green button, create a template and schedule a post are the options that you can do from there. And so though that uh, template will automatically become available for any of the publishing users in that project that you specified. So uh, let's say that an employee is trying to publish uh, approved content, they'll go to the publishing menu under content library, they'll see that post now show up. And obviously as you have multiple categories, they'll be able to filter through different categories, different networks, whether or not they've published it, it's a super useful a tool, especially for uh, when you're trying to get either, you know, like I said, pre-approved content out there and available for all of your clients to use or for your employees to use, or if you're trying to schedule a post to multiple locations, multiple brands at the same time as well, that could be very, very useful. So if you guys have questions on how to get that set up or how to use that, uh, definitely, you know, submit that in the Q&A. We've got, I believe, a help center article that focuses on getting the content library set up as well. So that should be pretty helpful. Now the last uh, product update that we're super excited about, I mean, we've kind of tried to hold this in as much as I can to make sure I'm not spilling beans or telling any secrets before they're supposed to be out there, but we're super excited to be able to announce our TikTok scheduling feature. Um, we're going to be launching that very, very soon. You're gonna be seeing announcements about that. You're gonna be seeing emails, we'll see messages uh, in the dashboard as well, but we're super excited. It's coming very close to an end and we'll be able to launch this feature. And so what this will allow you to do is you'll be able to specify um, the TikTok profile that you want to publish to. And from there, you'll be able to schedule a video post. Now you might be already familiar with this process, the indirect post scheduling. You'll be able to, for example, choose to send this video to the Trujack Social mobile app, or if you want to receive it as a notification via text or via email. And then once you receive that uh, through your phone, you'll be able to open it through directly here into the TikTok app the text will already be uh, copied uh, to your clipboard and that video will automatically get pushed into the TikTok app. You don't have to save it in your, your gallery. You don't have to do any of that. It'll go in automatically. You just have to you know, publish, uh, paste your, your text, add any hashtags that you want to in there, uh, make any changes to the filters if that's what you want, and you'll be good to go. So we're super excited uh, to be announcing this feature. Like I said, we're going to be launching that very soon. So if you guys have questions uh, or even feedback on things that you'd want to see in the future with TikTok, send that over to us, whether it's through the support email, send us notes on, on Facebook, on all the social media accounts, and in the chat here too, we definitely want to hear 
from you guys as far as TikTok, right? I know I know that there's a lot of interest in scheduling and some reporting uh, interests. Is TikTok something that you're looking forward to using? We've gotten a lot of awesome feedback on it, so we've been able to put this feature together, and we hope to you know hear some feedback from you guys as far as how that's going to work. Uh, that's everything on my end, Anna. Go ahead and take it away. I know Anna's got some awesome things uh, planned for just strategy altogether when we talk about TikTok. Yeah. All right. Give me one second, guys, um, to pull my screen up. And Reggie, you can see that, right? There you go. Yeah. All How right. You cool. Do? <laughs> So, um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm Anna, for uh, the, those of you guys that don't know me um, from previous office hours. Um, I'm on the marketing team at Traject Social, so one of the, the channels um, that's kind of in my marketing purview is also social media for all of the Traject brands. So, like a lot of you guys, um, for part of my day, I'm a social media manager. Um, so, like Reggie said, um, definitely be submitting questions through throughout as i'm talking through this um because we we usually try to spend the the bulk of the last half of this hour just talking through those questions um and i want to give a shout out to the first question we got um which was asking how we are doing today um you know there's a lot of really tough things going on right now um so i hope everyone is you know making sure to take care of themselves take care of their neighbors um, and if you're not really in that that mode to be kind of taking this in and, and be looking at work stuff, I know it's been happening to me a lot this week. Um, we're recording this. It's going to be on YouTube um, and up on the blog within the last couple of days, um, you know, because these are distracting times. So, but we're going to get through this. I'm going to kick off um, TikTok marketing strategy um, with a meme um, because this meme um, pretty much described me not that long ago, um, you know, when I hadn't really bought into the whole TikTok hype yet. Um, and I, I know that's kind of a, a pretty common sentiment, um, especially in older generations, that this is just a Zoomer thing and then maybe even be a passing fad. Um, but TikTok is here to stay. because um, they have 800 million users right now, uh, which is more than Twitter, which I think you know might surprise some people, but um, it really, the, the adoption that this platform has seen is just insane. Um, so the way that this differs from other social media platforms is really centered around video content. And it actually has a pretty fairly robust um, set of editing tools within the app. Um, that, that are really easy to use and, um, you know, kind of turn everyone into their own video creator. Um, it's very heavy on trend culture. So most of what you're, you're going to see um, is centered around, you know, people doing their own versions of really popular hashtags. Um, there's a lot of dancing and lip syncing. So the, the repeatability factor of, of these really simple dances or using the same popular song, um, you know, kind of allows people to jump in and do their own version of it. Um, and, you know, if you're a brand, like do a version that, you know, is kind of within the theme of your industry um, and really just take advantage of that um, repeatability that other people can join in on. Um, and then there's a lot of music effects and video effects. So the, the key to marketing on TikTok is entertainment, not sales. Um, it's not, it's not you know, a typical ad that you may use um, on Facebook that kind of educates people about your product. Um, people are really looking to go to TikTok to be entertained and watch these um, either humorous um, or entertaining videos. So that's kind of the angle that you want to come at this at, but then also have those be centered around a theme that's relevant to your business or feature your products within the video um, or that kind of thing. So the way the TikTok algorithm works is that you really anybody, if you have good content, can gain traction with their videos. So when you post a video, obviously it's shown to your followers, but some, you know, people have been doing studies on this, trying to track this. 
And what they found is that it will show it in the a Discover feed for a small handful of users. If those users click on it and they have you know, a rewatch or they like it or they seem to react well to it, it's then shown to a bigger pool of people. Same thing, those people like it, it's shown to a bigger pool of people. So people with really very measly followings can have one video that can skyrocket to popularity um, if they make it entertaining and they make it shareable. Um, and then you can see I've got some other, you know, metrics listed here that people have found um, that generally seem to create this success and sharing in those bigger pools of people, which is rewatches, video completions, shares, comments, and likes. So nothing too surprising there. Um, and here we have Okay, sorry, sorry if that music just um, scared anybody that was watching this at home. It, it came on kind of loud and it scared my dog. <laughs> so this is, this is a really good example um, of kind of the essence of TikTok. So you've got video content. Um, it, it's playing on that. Um, it's a trending hashtag challenge. Um, so again, that repeatability. So they found a trend. It's the leaving my body challenge. Um, and that repeatability. So they're they're doing their own version of something a ton of people are doing. And they're using the music, um, lip syncing, and they're using one of the video effects. So the idea here is this purple flame effect um, is to create a video, um, you know, showing something that leaves your body in, in a response to something else. So it started out kind of, um, you know, kind of more earnest. So like your social media manager, you can say, oh, the stress leaving my body after I schedule my post for the week. Um, and people started to make it kind of more sarcastic um, to kind of add that humor element. So this is obviously, you know, you're crying and someone's like, well, why don't you just stop crying? Like, oh, this person is sarcastic saying like, oh, wow, I guess that means I'm not gonna cry anymore. <laughs> um, so, you know, kind of adding that humor element um, really helps these posts go viral. So let's talk about audience. Um, it is skewed toward a younger audience. 41% are between 16 and 24. Um, the, the next most popular age range is um, 24 to 30 right above that kind of starting to grow with millennials um so it's definitely more for people who would skew towards that younger market um however like we talked about it's 800 million users um as long as you know you're not marketing to you know maybe like the the older generations that really don't see much smartphone usage at all or social media usage in general um, beyond that it's pretty much distributed between every you know country you can think of language um, it's fairly even across gender um, it's even across iphone or android usage um, so really if there's a good chance that somebody in your target market is going to be one of those 800 million users yeah that's However, a good point. yeah i i know it's it's also very easy to say, I don't market to Gen Z. Um, so it would be a waste of my time and resources to learn an entirely new platform, um, which which I, I can understand that outlook because it does take some practice and it takes time and resources. Um, okay. But something something that's really popular that I think you should keep in mind is how um, pervasive TikTok videos are on other social media channels. So they're all over Twitter, they're all over Instagram, they're all over Facebook. If you truly aren't sure that you'd be able to reach an audience through a TikTok account, I would encourage you to consider using TikTok to leverage the, the really robust suite of editing tools um, and then reposting those videos to be able to have that video content on your Twitter or your Facebook. 
yeah that, that's that's a really good point because like, i mean like you said right you see that being reused all the time and it, it's hard to see a network like that for a time you could embed your youtube videos right directly on a facebook post but ever since facebook started doing their own thing with videos it just ends up being a, a link right you won't be able to actually play that back in facebook so we're still in this unique state where TikTok is you know very compatible with all these different networks and we're seeing a lot of people who maybe are, aren't TikTok users but are consuming the media through WhatsApp and Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram so it's a very unique thing so, so you're, it's a great point yeah yeah absolutely and my best guess is honestly they they may not have any other choice these videos are so entertaining so viral that they've become especially on Instagram, they've become such a huge chunk of what accounts on Instagram post that if they didn't allow this, then it, you know, it would probably damage the usage of their own platform. Yeah, greatly diminishes so, the content that's going out for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so marketing on TikTok, there's three main avenues that you can choose um, at this point in time. You know, you can create your own, original content, you can do ads, or you can do influencer marketing. So influencer marketing is huge on TikTok, you know, mostly because it's, it kind of centers around that, that viral um, user generated content aspect, but also because influencer marketing is just popular with these younger populations in general. So some of these influence are, it's unreal, the amount of followers they have. So this is Charlie D'Amelio. And we're going to look at her TikTok quickly. Um, she has 60.4 million followers, billions of likes. Um, and I'm going to click on one of her videos because it's kind of funny. So it's kind of interesting that really wasn't anything mind blowing. Um, and it's, you know, millions of, or billions, I guess, of likes on her page. So I, oh, sorry, I really think it looks like they couldn't hear you. I think when, when you play those videos, I'm, I'm hearing it for some reason, but I don't think anybody else is hearing the audio come through on oh, those really? videos you played. Yeah. Oh no. Um, oh, good. okay. Yeah, um, it, it was really, it was just a, a pop song that she was dancing to. Um, so it's nothing special. I mean, no offense to her. It's nothing special um, to warrant these 60.4 million followers. Um, so what that really speaks to is just the the repeatability um, mm -hmm. aspect of content on TikTok. Um, you know, if you create a simple dance and everyone can do their own version to the same song and share it with the same hashtag. Um, you know, it's really that that trend culture that everyone kind of joins on that we're talking about. It's so interesting that you brought up her account and, you know, maybe you can speak a little bit more to that, too. But it's like you don't see that high of reach, you know, when you're talking about Facebook, when you're talking about Instagram, you're lucky to get, yeah. you know, a quarter of your followers to be your actual reach. But I mean, she had 60 million followers. And, most of her videos had over 20 million views. So it just it just goes to show too, like this network isn't quite ready yet, you know, to see that growth in ads, um, you know, like at Facebook or, or, you know, all these other networks that are so ads driven. Um, so you're seeing a lot more of that shareability that you're talking about. These are people seeing it, they're seeing it organically on their, or their stuff and they're showing it to friends, they're, they're sharing it to family members and, I think that's where we really see the higher reach there compared to a lot of these other networks that we were used to. Yeah, absolutely. They, you know, they want users that are genuinely entertaining to other users. Um, so that and kind of keeping in mind that that piece about the algorithm that I shared, that you know anybody with a good video can kind of grow in popularity. Um, I think is going to be really useful to to keep in the back of people's minds. So. Obviously, somebody um, who has 60 point whatever million followers um, is, would be incredibly expensive to work with. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple methods that you can use to find influencers that are probably more niche in your industry. Um, so 
when you're in TikTok, I'm going to show a video of me, a screen share of me doing this on my phone in the next slide. Um, but if you navigate to the Discover tab um, and you just kind of search a few keywords relevant to your industry, your business, that kind of thing, um, and you navigate to the Users tab, you can find the most popular users on TikTok that match up with those keywords. So th those are going to be bigger players. Um, they're going to be probably less um, exclusive and less expensive to work with um, because they're in those niche keyword categories. Um, but these are still incredibly popular users, so still, you know, a little bit big time. Um, a way that you can find micro influencers is by doing the same thing with discover and search in the keywords. But instead of looking for users, just looking through the popular videos, um, again, this goes back to the algorithm of that videos themselves can get a ton of traction without coming from a popular account. Um, you know, if you, you can find these videos that are growing in popularity that don't come from a user that has that multi-million user following yet, um, that can be a really great opportunity for you to jump in at the right moment in time um, and begin working with them. So, um, again, I feel like I should start giving noise warnings. So, um, some of these videos like the um, that might have um, sound or whatever, I'm going to start playing in the next one. Um, be ready for that. So I'm searching baking into the Discover tab, and I switched over to users, and kind of looking, through, these are the most popular accounts, um, and this is baking with Kate. So she just bakes simple recipes, um, edits them, you know, down into sh short videos, kind of showing them, um, and she's got thousands and thousands of followers that watch her do this. Um, so, you know, that's a good opportunity for you. You have 104,000 followers. Um, if, if you, you know, sold cookware or you had a bakery and while people are at home during coronavirus, like you're sharing your recipes, um, out to people who would normally visit your bakery, that kind of thing. Um, you know, this could be a, a smaller influencer, a more niche influencer that you could reach out to and work with. Um, if you choose not to work with an influencer and you are going to create your own original content, um, we, we've already mentioned this so much, I'm just gonna really drill it in, um, is that it's really important um, if you want that shareability and you want that virality to use humor and or music, um, but you can use those to give an inside look to your business or um, join in on popular things, um, but add the theme of your business or your industry. Um, a really popular one is DIYs. Um, this is also just in general on the internet is, is a really good way to change brick and mortar services to virtual services while everyone is kind of home under quarantine. Um, is, is kind of giving tips on how to do things at home um, that they normally would leave the house for. So now is kind of the perfect time to, yeah. to join in on this DIY stuff, um, but that's already a wildly popular category in TikTok. Um, the next one is these challenges. Um, so, you know, you guys may have seen on social media, the wipe it down challenge, um, the, the in my feelings challenge uh, with the Drake song. So. In my feelings, one, if you saw it all over Instagram and you were like, this is the only thing on my feed, I can't get away from it. Um, it actually was shared five times as many times on TikTok as it was on Instagram. Wow. Yeah. Um, insane. So jump in on those challenges, do your own versions and um, use the hashtags so people can find them that don't follow you. And I'm going to show you guys a couple examples. So noise warning, here come the examples. <laughs> they might not hear it, but. <laughs> okay, so this is, I'm looking through all the, the trending hashtags um, for today, you know, finding one that may, you know, maybe my business can take advantage of. Um, and so I've chosen this one, Spring DIY. And these are the popular videos there.
Okay. Um, can you guys hear the audio on them when they're directly in the presentation? I was seeing some, yeah, I was seeing some questions there. So it looks like, no, it doesn't look like anybody can hear when it's coming through the presentation, yeah. Hmm, okay. I apologize, guys. I'm not really sure um, how to... It might be um, just a go-to meeting thing, though. Um, maybe yeah. it doesn't support, like, sharing desktop audio or something. The the good news um, is that a lot of these are just being lip synced to pop songs, so I can just let you guys know when that's happening. <laughs> um, okay, so this is another example. A really huge one right now is rate things, um, and just random people rating um, sometimes really funny categories. So I apologize if you guys can't hear this, but um, this is literally just a person um, in their row using the green screen effect um, and walking through rating different potato chips. Um, and it's it's wildly popular and it's in this wildly popular um, hashtag challenge. So, you know, you can rate anything that's relevant to your business um, here. That's a really easy one to jump in on. Um, and this one, this is an example of a brand, you know, leveraging the rate. Oh, nice. So it's like an influencer using products from this brand that's trying to get some more recognition. Exactly. Yeah. So the, these challenges, um, just put your own flavor on them, but they don't need to be anything mind-blowingly creative that you need to sit in a think tank and come up with because, you know, the the simplicity is, is already there and people have already thought of them. Um, just do your own fun version um, that brings something relevant from your business. So last thing we're going to talk about is ads. Um, TikTok didn't have ads at first, so um, I know it can also be confusing. There's a lot of content floating around the internet about how TikTok doesn't have ads. Um, but they do now, they rolled it out and it's pretty robust. So they, they offer creation tools um, for people who wanna create ads that are may, maybe, you know, don't have the in-house ability to do it. Um, so these are video templates um, and creative optimization. And they can appear in four formats, which are in-feed, detail page, post roll, and story. Um, they, they do have a pixel um, and they have some, fairly decent um, targeting options. And if you are practiced at paid social ads um, and in targeting, they do have um, create your own audience and look like audiences, similarly to Facebook and LinkedIn have. Oh, nice, that's awesome. Yeah, wow. yeah, all that is, um, it's some pretty recent developments, um, but they're actually pretty transparent about all that targeting and um, reporting ability and also the cost um on their ads page so um definitely check that out um as you can tell by by the formats that they appear in it's still there still is an emphasis on them blending in um in a way to the rest of the content so this doesn't really let you off the hook um for creating something that is entertaining and not just salesy um but you know can can definitely get you that expanded reach um, if you don't have it yet organically with your account. Right, right. Um, and then I'm just going to, oops, I'm going to go back and move around some webinar things. And <laughs> it's not letting me click on that. Oh, so, that's all good. We had some really good questions come in, so I'm excited to tackle it. Uh, to go through some of these with you about like TikTok and hashtags and stuff like that. So that's awesome. I'm literally, you guys are seeing me literally Google search this right now. This is <laughs> <laughs> to try to find this case study. Um, so this is one that guest did. Um, the, you know, this was a success. Um, they did it via ads, but like this is what I'm saying about how you 
you can't slack off with, you know, keeping the spirit of TikTok and trend culture and the challenge culture. They did a hashtag in my denim challenge um, and spurred on that user generated content um, oh. of people lip syncing to a song in their denim. So, you know, really keeping in that TikTok spirit. So I believe now I have to go back to my presentation because they won't let me play these fun videos and links for you guys. Um, okay. So that's um, the, you know, crash course getting started on TikTok marketing. Um, and would love to hear any questions that you guys have about that um, or about anything that Reggie mentioned in the product roadmap update. So I, I was going to bring this one up too, Anna, because I, I saw a couple of people ask about, uh, we talked um, for a bit about uh, influencer marketing and all that. So like, let, let's just say that I'm brand new to that, right? I haven't used any sort of in influencer marketing uh, strategies in the past. Can you just kind of maybe share a little bit about what is influencer marketing and like what's what's the point of doing that as compared to maybe another you know, marketing strategy? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, influencers are people in a certain space that already have a following, um, usually a, a really large following um, that can feature your products either directly in their content, um, in their captions. Um, and usually it's, you want to find somebody that's relevant to your industry because you never, and obviously you guys are all marketers, you know this, you never really want to do a spray and pray. Um, so you work with influencers that have huge, huge followings, um, but it's not a, a niche targeted audience and you're just having them push something random. Um, you're not going to get a lot of return on your investment, but yeah. younger generations, millennials, Gen Zs, especially, um, trust influencers a lot um and generally when asked they trust influencers more than what the brand has to say um in a lot of cases so as long as you do your homework you find someone niche and reach out to them and work with them on a plan of what you expect from them and then also what they are going to gain from it um you could have a lot of success with influencer marketing Yeah, a lot of a lot of comments here about not being able to hear the audio. We're sorry, guys. No. There's some funny videos in there, but we'll, we'll try to either figure out the go-to meeting setting next time, or maybe try a different tool there for us to make sure the audio gets there. So, how I many know, hashtags? Are you... TikTok. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, go download TikTok, and then you can watch yeah. them. There you go. They'll watch all of them. So, there were some questions here about like like TikTok. And using hashtags like well, what's kind of best practices there you know obviously on instagram there's uh both sides of of the spectrum where people like to use 30 and then they would do like another 30 in the comments and then instagram took that down and said you can only use 30 all together now what's kind of the best practice for tiktok so best practices you absolutely need them um you know, it's not, if, if all the hashtags you're using aren't relevant um, and they aren't what people are looking for, they're not going to finish watching your video. Remember that watch time and that rewatches um, is important metrics to for your video to gain popularity. So, you know, be careful with them and keep them highly relevant, but you absolutely need them. And the way you can find the ones to use is start out with the main most popular trending ones that you are um, trying to jump in on from the trending page or the discover page or um, the, you know, the, the main over 313 category and then look for what the most popular users and the most popular videos are posting in that trend or that hashtag um, and borrow some hashtag inspiration from them, um, from the ones that are working to, to bring that video to popularity. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. I know you were talking a little bit about that, the um, the case study there with this challenge that they started. Do you think that that's something that every brand should try to do to create a challenge? Or do you think it's maybe not super reasonable to, to just say, hey, everybody should go and try to create a brand specific challenge? What's kind of the, your take on that? 
I think if if you're starting out and you you don't have a brand that has a ton of clout, you can have a lot of success with the challenge if you keep it more generic um, and more shareable. Um, so let me give you an example. So Chipotle, ton of clout. Um, they were able to start a challenge about people flipping their Chipotle bowls. Um, you know. It's like the water bottle flip thing. Yeah. Um, so everyone loves Chipotle, so everyone can get, get in on that, um, and they had success with it. Um, so if you're a brand that doesn't have that type of clout, I would recommend keeping it more generic and having it be something funny and entertaining that anybody could do, but have it be centered around something that specifically has to do with what your business does. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll come back to this bakery example. Um, you know, if you, you're releasing a new flavor of donut, you know, you can create a, this is like such a half-baked example, but just create a very donut specific challenge. Everybody loves donuts. Everybody can jump in on it. It's not super overly branded where they're like, oh, this is a weird sales pitch. Um, but then it comes back to, you know, your brand was the one that started. Um, you know, all of a sudden donuts are trending. People are searching donuts and like there's more of a chance, you know, they're coming across either your TikTok account or your brand in searches. Um, you're kind of like stimulating that primary demand rather yeah. than making it centered all about your business's name. Yeah, I think that's where it'll work well, right? When we try to be a little too salesy, I don't think TikTok really is the place for that. It, it just doesn't work well. It doesn't respond well, the audience. So, I mean, I think this is this is funny because there was a question that came in about like the mortgage industry, right? Some industries like the mortgage industry, um, they're pretty regulated. So, you know, I think it's kind of tying into this challenge thing, right? Where like everybody, you know, either lives in a house or wants to buy a house or an apartment or something like that. So like finding a challenge that would make sense to your industry, right? But can tie back into some sort of core symbolism of what you do, right? So I think that that's a pretty funny uh, thing that you said about the donuts there, but I think it can be applicable to, you know, any industry really. You can find a yeah. way to create a, a unique challenge that will allow it to link back to what you do. Especially, I mean, even the mortgage industry specifically, it's a, a huge trend and people talking about TikTok, um, especially if people, like millennials my age um, on Twitter talking about how do all these young TikTokers have these stupidly gorgeous houses with these giant kitchen islands. Um, yeah. So, so talk, talking about TikTok houses actually is a popular, um, you know, subject. So you, okay. yeah, and, and kind of nuanced things like that exist a lot if you really just dive into using the app and, and seeing what's popular. Um, and I would also encourage people to join in on the sarcasm aspect and the humor aspect of that sarcasm. So, you know, people may not expect um, a more regulated, um, more serious industry um, like that to be on TikTok. You know, maybe lean into that and, and make fun of it. Um, that sarcasm and humor is something that plays really well on TikTok. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So we had a lot a lot of questions that kind of revolved around that, right? Your brand challenges or the hashtags. Um, there was a question that came in about like usernames on 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 TikTok and whether or not that plays a role on influence. But I think you know kind of what you said. It's TikTok's really about the the content, right? Are are you putting content that is funny? It's relevant. It can have an impact on more than just a specific niche. So I mean. I don't know if you agree with me, Anna, but I don't think usernames per, per se would have such a, a greater impact as compared to the actual content for becoming viral or just having reach. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, it, it always helps to have a username that um, people can say and remember and mention to people, um, you know, so staying away from anything like crazy alphanumeric um, symbols and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, I, I really don't think it has much pull on your popularity. Yeah. All right, we still got plenty of questions here. This is awesome, guys. Keep keep sending them over, please. This is awesome. 
Uh, let's see. So there are some specific hashtag related questions. I think you did you did an awesome job after that question came in, kind of just showing how to go through the discover and how to kind of take a look at some content in the specific industries to see if you can find things that are relevant to you. Um, so that's just really cool. I think there's a question here about Facebook Pixel, but before I dive into that, I think it's phenomenal that TikTok is understanding that the Pixel on Facebook has become an industry-wide thing. Everybody uses it, right? If you want to truly measure how that's translated to sales or to site visits and you know any sort of conversions, that Facebook Pixel is crucial and it's used industry-wide. So for them to say, you know, like this really works, let's implement this in TikTok. So that marketers, right, people who are gonna be advertising, they can actually attribute ROI to that too. So that, that's really, really cool. Um, and just to kind of go back to this question, Jess asked the question, how do we utilize the Facebook ads within Traject Social? So that's an awesome question, Jess. We do have the ability to monitor Facebook ads. So you can connect it. If you go to your channel reports, and you head over to the Facebook section, you're gonna see an ads section there just for Facebook, and you'll be able to either connect specific campaigns or an entire, entire ad account. And if you connect the ad account, we'll continue to download your ad sets going forward into the future, and you'll see you know, their performance, your ad spend, all of that great stuff. So definitely something that you can do with Facebook ads um, as far as reporting with Introject Social. And if you're doing boosting, uh, you can just schedule a post with Interject Social and specify the ad spend for that post. Uh, if it's going to Facebook and then specify the audience, uh, how long you want that campaign to run for, you can do that all natively through Interject Social. Yeah, I really like this question. Um, how can you use TikTok to grow Instagram or YouTube? Um, so the I really do recommend using this cross-pollination tactic that I mentioned at the beginning um, about using the, the TikTok um, video creators and then reposting that on other channels. Um, they, they always have the TikTok symbol um, in the top and then your TikTok username. So that will let people know that you're on TikTok and, and what your account is if they want to see it directly um, to kind of grow in that direction, um, to grow from TikTok to other directions. Um, you know, you can you can market that you are um, creating compilations of if you have a whole bunch of themed videos, um, that could be something that somebody it may be more palatable to somebody on YouTube. Um, and then the probably the easiest part of this, the most exciting part of this, um, is something that at first was only available to a handful of people. Um, now more people can do it is adding a link in their bio. So. For most of the time that TikTok has been around, has been popular, um, people can't put a link um, to drive traffic to their other social media sites um, or their website in their bio, um, and now it's rolling out. So what I would recommend if you, it's best practice to have your website, but if you're kind of torn um, between like, oh, I want to actually drive traffic to my Instagram, um, is using something like Linktree that just brings you to a landing page and then people have all of the options of if they, if they wanna to go to your website, they wanna to go to your Instagram, um, things like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we talked a little bit about the apps and how they, they're gonna play a role in TikTok scheduling, specifically with Traject Social. So we talked about how we're gonna, we're already launched, we've already launched the uh, Android app which is you know, kind of that first step, right? You're gonna continue to be able to do what you already do on the iPhone, uh, but now on an Android app as well. So we're continuing to support that for the users who are using it on Android. Uh, but taking it to the next step with TikTok, right? You're gonna be able to schedule that, you'll receive a notification on your phone, uh, and you'll be able to push that video into the TikTok app. We're automatically gonna be copying the, the text to your clipboard, um, and that'll kind of be your workflow when it comes to scheduling with Traject Social. We had a question come in specifically about the Android app that I wanted to talk about. So we had, like I said before, about 20 users who were running the beta app, Traject Social, before we launched it to the Android uh, Google Play Store. Um, and they're having some trouble with installing the app. And this one, I wanna make sure that I can get to, uh, to this one. If you were either uh, on the, the Traject Social beta, or if you still have installed on your Android phone, the old social report app, you wanna make sure that you remove both of those before you try to go to the Play Store and download the official version. Um, 
I'll get some more updates from the engineers. I'm sure this is something that we can fix. But meanwhile, right now, if you guys are trying to get that Android app uh, going on your phone, uh, just make sure if you have the old beta version or if you have the old social report version, go ahead and remove those from your phone before going to the Play Store to install the official version. That should take care of it. Um, I think that was asked by Haley. So hopefully that answers your question, Haley. Oh, we had a couple of questions here about the content library. So kind of going a little bit further away from, from the TikTok questions just real quick, but uh, the content library, I think I see three or four questions about that. So you'll find that um, under your My Profile. So if you click on your profile picture on the top right-hand corner, you'll see the content library below. If you don't see that, it might be that you're not on the right plan. Um, the content library is a feature for the pro plan. Um, but if you are on the pro plan, then it's likely you're not logged in as the account owner or as an admin. So go ahead and just shoot over an email to support. I'm sure they'll be able to help you to, to either get the right permission set up for you or to go over the plan that does support that content library feature for you guys. Oh, that's a great question on Facebook ads. I don't know if you saw that one come in too, Anna, but the question is like when we're boosting posts with Interject Social, how does the budget work for that? How's the billing work? So we use the Facebook ad account that you specify when you're choosing to boost. So if I've got a post that's going out next Tuesday, uh, when I click to boost that post with Interject Social, I can actually specify, hey, this is the ad account that I want to use for billing. This is the saved audience that I want to use. This is the budget. And this is how long I want to run this, this boosted post for, right? So if I want to do $5 a day or $15 a day for five days, you can choose all of that. And it'll be billed uh, to the default billing for the ad account that you specify. So hopefully that helps, Melissa, to, to answer that. There's no limit. Um, you won't get charged on your Traject Social account for using the, bill, the, the boosting feature. Like I said, it gets billed to your Facebook ad account. And there's no limit as far as you can only spend X amount per month or um, how many ads you can run. All of that is, is unlimited there. Yeah, I, I would say that that's something that um, there are some questions on is just the, the fact that you need to go to Facebook and create that account um, before you start boosting through Traject Social. Um, ah. Traject Social will, you know, pull directly from everything you already have set up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. If you've got your, your saved audiences already on Facebook, we'll be able to pull those in. So there'll probably be a little bit of a setup if you don't already have an ad manager account, just to get, you know, your billing set up over there, um, you know, specify your audience, all that. But even if you don't have an audience, you can actually use um, the, mo the the screens in Traject Social to specify, you know, the demographics, the age range, and all of that. Um, is there a hashtag search tool on TikTok? Yes. Yeah, so um, if if you're you open the app and then along the bottom you have your main navigation bar um, and you just go to discover that um, that search bar will allow you to search for any hashtags. Um, and I'm opening TikTok right now um, because I believe that there's um, a hashtag specific um, one you can search for. Um, yes. So the, the last category, like how I showed you guys, users, videos, etc. cetera, um, you can search for hashtags as well. Oh, nice. Okay. And the, and the uh, TikTok app. Awesome. So there's a question there about working with influencers and what does that mean, working with them? So I think, uh, Anna, you answered that question when you kind of went through you know, what does it mean to work with the influencer? What is influencer marketing for? So I think that was it's a great answer there. We'll give them a little bit uh, more detail, but I just kind of wanted to get some perspective. If somebody's coming in, they've either never heard of influencer marketing or maybe they just haven't approached doing that as part of their strategy yet. I think that was an awesome strategy um, description there from you. Totally. I jumped into that one 10 steps ahead. So I'm, I'm glad that you backed me up to the beginning. Yeah, definitely. And really, we're working with these people is is as simple as, you know, once you you find um, people that are niche that you think would work well for you, um, just emailing them or messaging them um, and keeping some documentation of everyone you've reached out to um, 
in, in working through those responses. Right. Yeah. So Jess is interested in, in maybe learning some more about Google My Business, interject. Yeah, Jess, we can definitely you know, see if we can focus on some some answers for you or some strategy or whatever it is that you're looking for. If you want to either send that over here or just send us over an email so that we can prepare for next month's call and that way we can make sure to if there's any questions specifically on Google Business or any strategy or anything like that, we can share that with you. That's really exciting. Um, for, for some of you guys that haven't been here in the past, um, we've been doing some talking about um, the the suite of tools and how now that we're part of Traject, you guys have access to these other tools. Um, some of our other tools are very heavy on optimizing Google My Business, like um, oh, yeah. reputation management. So that'd be something cool. I mean, I'm we have enough. We could say we might have to pull in like a, a guest celebrity appearance. Yeah, have, we should have Garrett on here or something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We should get them to give us a quick tour for you know someone who's looking to do. Hey, uh, I've got Google Business. I might have Yelp. I might have a couple other. I want to manage you know the reviews yeah. that are coming in. That'd be yeah. awesome. Totally. That, that's a great idea. Thank you guys for jumping in on that. Yeah, so um, for, for the question about Google My Business is part of Traject. Um, so we we just have a couple of different ways that you can manage um, your Google My Business presence, um, like separately on Google through Traject tools. So like you can, um, the, the post feature on Google My Business, you can post those updates through Traject Social, um, you know, the same way you put on other newsfeed sites. Um, we, the other products we're talking about are also kind of the, um, the reputation management side of things. So, um, you know, the, the reviews um, and questions and then um, just optimizing your Google My Business to be found, um, you know, really goes into a lot of local SEO practices. So kind of looping in our um, knowledge from our SEO tools there as well. So it all, it, it really spans across a bunch of the traject tools, but it still is uh, you know, like a separate Google property. Yeah. All right. So the questions are tapering off there. I'm doing my best to, to try to go back to the beginning to see if we miss any of the ones that, that started coming in as we started. It looks like a lot of these we kind of answered as we started just talking about TikTok and the strategy that you had in place too. Yeah. Oh, the, the link tree question. Um, so, Linktree is um, the name of one that is probably the biggest player in that space. Um, that's the only one that I know off the top of my head um, that I think I've seen people have a lot of success with. Um, so maybe just, you know, a quick Google search um, would come up with some competitors. Got some questions here on, on automated reporting. I saw a couple of questions that had come in before about building a report. So that's a, that's a great one, Pam. We'll definitely talk about that. Maybe I can build some example ones for you guys and uh, for the next call. That'd be awesome. And Greg, if you want to suggest a feature, you can do it here. You can send it through support. If you go to the, the little question mark widget, the support widget that you might see in your dashboard, uh, there should be an option there for you to submit a support request to or submit a ticket. And any way you want to send it over, happy to hear some feedback for sure. Yeah, and then I'll I'll jump in and back you up, Greg, because it's there's there's a chance that whatever you guys want, I've been scheduling social posts for the Traject brands, and I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, we're really excited about the roadmap. We've got a lot of awesome things in plan. I mean, we've shared a little bit with you guys as far as like Canva and some of the reporting we're trying to bring to the mobile apps. Uh, but there's obviously a lot more that we're planning this year. I don't want to, you know, get you guys too excited just yet. But there's there's some really awesome things that we're excited for, for the summer, for the fall as well. And so just keep coming back to these these calls. We're going to be sharing awesome strategy here with Anna. We'll go over your questions, and we also want to make sure that we're giving you guys a heads up on some awesome things that should be coming out pretty soon. 
Yeah, this this was a heavy hitting update. These are these are some really time intensive, work intensive, exciting things. So I hope you guys are excited too. For sure. Boulders to the Media Library. That's a that's a good one. I've actually heard that one before. Thanks, man. I don't know. All right, guys. Let's yeah, see. we we are kind of on the hour. Um, thank you guys so much uh, for all of your your time, your attention, your input um, in these questions and stuff. Yeah. Um, some some really great suggestions for for the next ones that we do. Um, and you know, it always helps to kind of uh, take the pulse with you guys and, and what you want to learn about. Um, so thank you guys so much for your time. Um, and we will hope to see you next month and hope everybody stays safe, stays well. Yeah, definitely. You guys stay safe. And hey, we're going to be sending out that notification reminding you guys next month for the next call. So as soon as you see that, send us over your suggestions in the email. Okay. That way we can make sure to answer everybody's questions. Exactly. Care, everybody. Awesome. Thanks.